First of all, GCSE evening, why do we have this evening? Well, to promote and encourage your involvement, because um, that would be a main part of what I'm talking about today, is your part in their education. Compton School in Barnet has been trying out some new ideas to get parents more involved in their children's education. Um, there is something else that is a bigger influence on your child's success at the Compton, and that is <laughs> yourselves. That is actually you. Um, yes, parents do matter. All the research shows that their involvement has a critical impact on achievement. Recognition of this has helped put Compton in the top 5% of schools in contextual added value. We recognise that the relationship with the parents that we have and that the child has is, is absolutely fundamental to their success in the school. And when the children start at the school, um, they sign a contract, which we call a three-way contract, and you know we firmly believe that that actually is what does make the difference, that actually it's not just the school working on its own, it's not the child working on its own, it's the three of us. All schools say they want parents fully involved, but here, words are being turned into actions. Tonight, parents of this year's New Year 10 are being shown how to access the school's database. What I want to sort of show you, and you're only going to get a taster of it today, is actually how you can access some information on your child. Parents are being given a unique password, allowing them to browse from home through detailed information about their children's achievement. And you will get a page, something like this page here. What it's got there is their timetable for the day, the name of their teachers, what room, and so on. It will give you your child's attendance, OK? And it will also record sort of the dates that they were absent, the description, whether or not it's been authorised and explained. To share with What's kids. highly unusual is sharing with parents um, detailed Fisher Family Trust data on their children's projected grades and how close they are to achieving them. They're an estimated grade. And I use the term estimated grade. They are not targets. This has Eleanor's predictions for Key Stage 3. Um, and then, again, it's given estimates for Key Stage 4. If she performed totally average and she fitted everything, those were sort of likely grades. Now, it only talks really in probabilities. Okay, it's saying there she had a 37% chance of gaining a level six. She had a 93% chance of gaining a level five. It's not saying level six is out of the question. The parents know their children, they know what gets them. Good or bad, they know how to reward and they know how to sanction. And if a parent doesn't know how well their uh, son or daughter is performing, then we should tell them. And it's as simple as that. It gives you an idea. You know, if your child is, is going to struggle, then there's no point you kind of hammering on about A-levels because you're simply likely to turn them off education. You know, you may think of a more appropriate kind of... Um, sixth form education. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm just saying that sometimes people deny the facts and deny what their child is like, and then it comes to kind of transfer at the end of year 11, and it becomes incredibly stressful both for the parent and the child. Yes. We have kind of simplified the data and sort of honed it down so it is as clear as possible. And sometimes that is very powerful in saying to, to parents, look, they aren't achieving what they're capable of. And, you know, it's not just teachers or relationships with teachers. Fundamentally, your child can do better. Well, I think it's a good idea myself, personally. I mean, I've never been able to have such autonomy over my son's um, future or just information about what he's doing and where he's at. So I think this is a really good thing. Positive, it's a way forward. Where's the where's science? There, look, you see, yeah. that's wonderful. A. Mind you, it's a real spread there, isn't there? You know, from the sublime to the ridiculous there a bit, I suppose. What it's all about as, as parents is helping him achieve his best at GCSE. That's the bottom line. And I think that information can help us quite a lot, actually, yeah. Although, I suppose you've got to sort of temper it a little bit and, and, and the. 
you've got to have a full understanding of the implications of it, so I don't want to get too carried away, but I think it's all in all, it's, it's better to know it than not, I, I think, yeah. Compton also relies on more traditional technology. I'd like to put him on report starting as of Monday. But once again, the process is unusually thorough. This is science teacher Karen Ham's seventh call this evening. Yeah. Now, if he's put on report, I decide, along with him, what targets he should have. And uh, at the end of each day, I will have a look at the comments that teachers have made, and hopefully he'll be re reaching all those targets. And then I'll send it home with him to you so that you can have a look at the report and you can make any uh, additional comments. Would that yeah, be OK that with sounds, you? That sounds great. I'm quite disappointed that he's um, not getting his head down. So he's now messing about in school. I'll, I'll have some serious words with him when I get home you get the feeling that when the child gets home, they're going to be in for it a bit. Uh, well, that's kind of the impact that we're hoping for. We spend a lot of time communicating through their planner. Now, that's just one line. With a phone call, it only takes an extra 30 seconds or a minute to do, but it's actually, this is why they're calling out, this is why we can't have it, this is why they're in trouble today. I, you know, I don't want perfect behaviour, but what we can't have is this particular type of behaviour. Can you just have a word, please? And often that's... Often that's what it takes. Fantastic improvements um, in science. Yeah. Um, he's just grasping concepts way ahead of the rest of the class, um, and he's challenging me as well. Uh, you know, he understands the concept and he wants to push it even further. Okay, with you. The school believes that good news yeah. is as empowering Excellent. as bad. And he's got some really intelligent. This is in chemistry. Isn't this in it? chemistry, yes. Mm -hmm. um, he's got some really intelligent ideas. Um, and I think he, he's very excited as well that he's understanding everything so quickly and it's, it's motivating him further. It's really, really important that you're having communication with the parents wherever there's an issue. Um, but not just because it's poor behaviour. If a student is doing really, really well, sometimes they feel left out, neglected, that their constant good behaviour isn't being recognised. You just remind him that uh, although Miss Han knows that he's, he's doing really, really well, he can prove it by getting a fantastic mark in his um, end of unit test as well. Right, OK, and is that, that's taking place on Monday? Monday he's going to have that. OK, right. Well, it's really, really nice to get a call that's so positive because over <laughs> six school years I've very often not got calls that are that positive about him. So, thank you. I can think of many situations where, you know, perhaps a more traditional a course of action might have been to punish a child but actually the time and effort spent getting that parent to come in at a time that it could be you know really difficult for for us as a school but actually having that parent in and, and building up that relationship with the parent has been the most powerful manipulator really sometimes what's happening at school can throw up issues at home another initiative is a parent skills support group held weekly on the premises and run by a member of the senior management team. I, I am kind of in a different role here this evening. You know, I'm here to facilitate. It's not, you know, I'm not here to sort of talk about your individual child. Can you just think about uh, something that is, maybe it's not a major cause of stress, but something which uh, is currently causing, uh, you know, anxiety or stress for you as a parent? We speak to our heads of year and ask them who, which parents they think might benefit from coming. And quite a lot of them will say yes, and some of them will say yes and not come. It is quite difficult to try and, you know, get people to, to come and not to feel threatened by it. And it's a very sensitive area, and it's sometimes something I'm not necessarily comfortable with, you know, that I'm asking people to come to something because I think they're a bad parent. You know, that's not it. Yeah. It's clear that those who come find it really helps. My answer to that would be as soon as, soon as possible, you know, really early. Um, if I'm belonging. Everything you know, for what made me anxious is that I didn't want to think something bad about us, you know, Jason and myself. That was the first thing that I was apprehensive, you know, at the beginning. But then when she said that this was confidential and she would not report it or speak to Jason about it or anything, you know, so it was OK. We, he had a lot of problem at the beginning, losing everything, mm. but now he learned how to... And how did you do that? But, for example, if he lost something, I made him pay for it, especially his, mm. like, say, his, um, his school uh, uh, pencil case. Mm. I remember mm. we, it was when he first began, it was full, you know, of everything. After uh, two weeks, he said it, it was lost. We changed it and he lost it again. Then I told him, that's it. You have to pay for it mm. from your own pocket money. 
Well, before, I think she didn't have like as much uh, patience towards me and she didn't, and she was more, le more agitated, I mean, of like all the cleaning and stuff at the house. And yeah, and before, also with my homework, I didn't used to get as focused and I always used to complain. But since the parents' classes, uh, she's like tackled the homework in a, like a way, she pretends like she's in my situation. So she knows what won't annoy me and what will. He always liked school, but now more, you know, he's, he comes, oh, it's, we had an interesting day, like in history or science was interesting, or, you know, in English, if you want to, you know, open a story, you use that. You know, he's more active, you feel, you know. I might go in once or twice a week and say, got any homework to do today, or have you done your homework? And then I might look at his books while he's at school or something. But inside, I'm wanting to go in and check all the time. It's not about you're doing this wrong and you're doing that wrong. It's about expressing emotions and how to support each other through it. Grounding teenagers just doesn't work, right? Because then they just get angry and resentful towards you and they don't think about what it is they've done. So what I do is if she's late, however late she is, that's how much early she's got to come in the next time she goes out. We've talked a lot about communication, the way to communicate with teenagers. You know, it's not necessarily the same way you communicate with everyone else. Kind of um, looking to see what's going on underneath rather than what um, the behaviour is above. And sometimes it's even the child encouraging the parent to attend. This was one wintry day, you know, and I was, I was tired, I didn't want to go. He said, well, come on, Mom, go, don't you worry, you know, we'll have anything, you know, just go. No need for you to do supper or anything, just go and it's good for you. So I said, like, it was really helping me at school and our relationship was uh, a lot more closer and we got along better. And uh, when she heard that, she basically was all for it. He was pushing me, you know, and each time I had to come back and report to him, you know, what we talked and everything. So it was good. There is a very strong sense of support and of, of parents that do come, the new parents that come and the parents who are there, feeling actually there is something here, you know, that there, there is something kind of fairly fundamental here that, that's about sharing experiences, but actually it is making me think about myself and, and my role and I do feel empowered from coming. This unique relationship takes its toll. Not many cars leave the car park at half past three. But with Compton recently achieving a contextual value added of over 1,020, they say the three-way relationship is fundamental. Our society does blame the parents, and I don't think that's what Compton's aim is at all. I think they just want to get a relationship and a partnership, a triangle, um, because if a parent is able to understand why the kid's doing what they're doing without just seeing them and labelling them, um, they might change their approach. It's a three-way partnership. I mean, it's the child, it's the parent and it's the school. And without that, I just don't think you can actually have a complete education. If you don't have everybody on board, if you don't have the student basically trying their hardest, if you don't have support from parents, if you don't have the right support from schools, then how is the child supposed to succeed?